Hi everybody, it's Sam. Uh, this is the movie wrap up for April. Again, if you hear noises in the background, I'm watching Sponge Out of Water. Um, I didn't watch any VHS this much, this month, and I might be able to do this in just one video. So. And I watched all of these. <laughs> I want part 10. Uh, because of the number 9. That Chinese, no Japanese, Japanese woman stole some of the dolls. Let me see. He still got. He's still got Pinhead, what he calls Jap. Sorry for, I don't mean to offend Japanese people, but that's what he calls him in the movie Jap. It's a doll, it's a Japanese doll. That's what he calls him. And, Pinhead, Jap, and Blade. Tunneler, I'm assuming some other ones are missing, but I can't remember. A leech, Leech Woman. I think she's missing. And I might, might be some more. I don't really, I didn't really notice, but I could be wrong. Oh wait, Tummer, Leech Woman, and the, what is his name? Joker? Jack? It's got the guy who switches his, turns his head around, you know, comes with different faces. I, out of all, all of them, I like, I like number nine. I like number four and five. Part 8 disappointed me. A spoiler for anybody that hasn't watched any of these. Part 8 mentions the boy from Part 4 and 5. The rogue agent, right, kills the dude, the awful Part 4 and 5. She said something on the long of the lines of. She shot him four times, basically. He was trying to keep the book away from her because creating the formula, elixir, whatever, uh, that, that brings the doll's life. He was trying to keep it away from her, so she killed him. And it does mention on the eighth one about the young boy. Well, he's an old man now, but the young boy off of part three. It's pretty good, I, but again, I don't get not like part two. Part of one, part eight disappointed me. Part eight did, but it was still kind of good. Except it was kind of boring at the same time. It just like went back and forth from scenes from the old, old ones, the one shot before, to you know. Then, I mean, it kept going, like, trying to stop her from killing him and junk it. <sighs> kind of boring. Kind of good, but kind of boring at the same time. Uh, I think I've already mentioned this, but Puppet Master, a demonic crew of puppets, unleash their murderous talents on psychic investigating their, and psychics investigating their owner, owner Andrew Tumon. Puppet Master 2, Tumon's army of assassin puppets exhumed their beloved creator to gather the brain matter that keeps him alive, but the Puppet Master has deadly plans of his own. Puppet Master 3, Tumon's revenge, after Tumon escapes a kidnapping attempt that killed his wife, he exact, exacts revenge with Six Shooter Blade and Leech Woman, a new army of many murderers. Puppet Master 4, Blade, Tunneler, Pinhead. And the newest head swapping puppet, Decapitron. I wish I could have brought him back. Go toe to toe with their um, their most menacing enemy yet, a team of terrifying gremlin like creatures. Yeah, gremlin like creatures are demonic little monsters, you know, basically. Puppet Master 5, caught between two foes, the half pint heroes must preserve the magic formula which gives them life, while Puppet Master Rick slice hangs in the balance. This is what also what I don't get them on these. Um, 
why it says that dude bought him on one of them. I think it's give me a minute. I think it's on the It's on part six. That um why did he put them the dolls up for auction? Because it's in part six. You listen. Puppet Master 6. Curse of the Puppet Master. Toulon's puppets have a new master in backwoods scientist Dr. McGrew. See? He sold them. Who has been desperately trying to duplicate the great Puppet Master's work. Puppet Master 7. Rachel Puppet Master. Young Toulon is taught the secret of life by an Egyptian sorcerer, but then becomes the target of an evil god. Actually, that one I really did like, too. Except I feel bad for the sorcerer. And the, yeah, the guy who plays Young Taloon is cute. Puppet Master 8, The Legacy. Taloon's reanimation re re formula is in jeopardy when a rogue agent threatens its protector. Puppet Master 9, Nexus of Evil. A young man named Danny saves Taloon's puppets after his death and must now bring them to life to defeat the Axis of Evil. Part 9 basically picks up, in a way, to where, at the, I think at the beginning of Part 1, it's been a while since I watched Part 1, um, the, where that old man shoots himself, uh, Tulum, when Tulum shoots himself, pick, it picks up where that left off, basically. But I actually really like these, except for maybe part part two. Part two is my least favorite. I say I like part two, but not too much. The only reason I don't like part two is because the leech woman and the storyline behind it kind of threw me off, you know. But I did like it. I then watched. Okay, I'm sure I was grabbing another one. This is the last two that I've got. Haunted Histories Collection number seven. Uh, America's Most Haunted Places. Haunted Tombstone, Spirits, Spooks, and Superstition star in this memorable tour of the Old West's most famous towns. Venture into the sun-baked desert to explore the paranormal heritage of Tombstone, Arizona, where the ghosts of yesterday replay the tragedies that cut their life short. Haunted Washington, D.C., once called the greatest towns for ghosts in the country, Washington, D.C. is filled to this day with tales of the deceased. Learn how the spirit of Abraham Lincoln, the presence of Ulysses S. Ulysses S. Grant, and the ghost of first ladies, military heroes, and famous politicians are still seen and felt in our nation's capital, haunted Savannah. Journey to this elegant southern city where spirits have been known to lurk in the Bulak facade. I don't even know how to say it. From an 18th century pirate to a confederate private, ghostly encounters have continued for decades and inclined the mysteries de mysterious deaths of a local man known to have committed communed with the dead. I like these. I like his show. Oh, wait. Well, I can't really. The only reason I didn't tell you when any news was made, it didn't really tell me. I mean, it tells me certain years, but no way in the world could they have been made at this. All of them tell me almost the same year. Some of them don't tell me any years, so I'm not going to tell you when this was made. I'm sorry. Again, Haunted Histories. This is the last one that I know of. You guys tell me if there's any more, but uh, Volume 8. Uh, again, Haunt Amor. America's Most Haunted Places. Uh, it's only got two on this one. Haunted Hawaii, one of the world's top vacation destinations. This jewel-like islands are filled with stories of spirits, ghosts, and specters. Go beyond Hawaii's tropical charm to a world where the spirits of violent native warriors do not rest quietly and where, and where mysterious and magical magic emerge in the dead of night. Haunted Chicago. The forces of nature exert a mystery, mystic, sorry, mystic force on the Windy City, home to perhaps the most haunted cemetery in the country, where 
lighted orbs dance through the woods, and a city in which the spirits of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre roamed the sites where they were murdered 80 years ago. I then watched the Leprechaun, uh, her luck just ran out. If you're wondering, I got this at FYE, and I cannot get that sticker off. I'm trying to see if I can tell you when this was made. I don't think I can. I'm sorry, I can't tell you when this was made. A horrific leprechaun goes on a rampage after his precious bag of gold coins is stolen. He uses all of his magical destructive powers to trick, terrorize, and kill anyone who is unlucky enough to hinder his relent relentless search. In a frantic attempt to survive the wrath of the leprechaun, Tori and her friends scramble to find find the only weapon known to kill the Irish monster. Sorry, Irish monster, a four-leaf clover. However, until they discover a four-leaf clover or return all his all the gold taken from the Rainbow's End. Their fairy tale nightmare has only just begun. I actually want all of these. I know one of them I didn't like too much, but I can actually sand it, you know. I don't know about. I don't know if I've ever seen that that um one in space. I know Vice said it sucked, but I kind of want to see it. I think I saw. I think I saw all of them up to that. I didn't get to see that one because Vice said it sucked, so I skipped it. Then watched National Treasure. This was made in 2005. It's the thrilling il It's the thrilling edge of your seat adventure starring Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage as ben Benjamin Franklin Gates. Ever since he was a boy, Gates has been obsessed with finding the legendary Knights Temple of Treasure, the greatest fortune known to man. As Gates tries to find and decipher ancient riddles that will lead him to it. He's dogged by a ruthless enemy who wants the riches for himself. Now in a race against time, Gates must steal one of America's most sacred and guarded documents, the Declaration of Independence, or let it and a key to key clue to the mystery fall into dangerous hands. Heart pounding chases, close calls, and the FBI turn Gates' quest into a high stakes crime caper and the most exciting treasure hunt you've ever experienced. The only reason I'm not saying any special features on the other ones is that, known to my knowledge, they don't have any. I don't think the Puppet Masters, any of them, had no, because it's got, what was that, I think one through five on one disc, which had nothing, I mean, you just click the number you want, and then all the other ones are basically the same thing, too. So... This one, I think, has special features. Give me a minute. Alternating endings with commentary. Deleted scenes with commentary. Uh, making a feature at The Knight's Templar feature at Treasure Hunter's Revealed feature at Riley's Decode This Again. Uh, opening scene animatic with optional director's commentary. That's it. I watched National Treasures 2, Book of Secrets. I hope, oh, I can't wait for them to come out with a new one. Uh, this one's made in 2008, three years after the first one. Join Nicolas Cage on a heart pounding adventure that will have you on the edge of your seat in a race to find the lost city of gold. Grounded in history and imbued with myth and mystery, Disney's National Treasure Book of Secrets takes you on a globe-trotting quest full of adrenaline, pumping twists and turns, all leading to the final clue in a mysterious and highly guarded book containing centuries of secrets. But there's only one way to find it. Ben Gates must kidnap the president, packed with fast-paced action and a crackling humor. National Treasure Book of Secrets is a movie your entire family will want to rediscover again and again. Commentary. Uh, that's all I see. Commentary. 
and I've watched Friday the 13th Deluxe Edition. Um, let's see, in cut to. It was made in 1980. A rip into a chilling new uncut deluxe edition on Friday the 13th. With the addition of unrated footage and in insightful special features, plunge deeper into the film that spawned 11 sequels and the genre's unstoppable bad guy Jason Voorhees. A new owner and several young counselors, counselors gather to reopen Camp Crystal Lake where a young boy drowned and several vicious murders occurred years earlier. They've ignored the locals' warnings that the place has a death curse, and one by one they found out how unlucky Friday the 13th can be as they are stalked by a violent killer. Commentary, fresh cuts, new tales from Friday the 13th, the man behind the legacy, Sean F. Cunningham, a Friday the 13th reunion, lost tales from Camp Blood Part 1, theatrical trailer. I just wish that I could get all the lost kills from Camp Blood because I kind of enjoyed the, that little short movie. I then watched Gimme Shelter made in 2014? No, 13? Thir 13 or 14? Everyone deserves a chance at life based on it on the gripping true story that's I know it's based on a the woman that runs the shelter but I know it's probably a stupid question but did this like did that actually happen to one of the girls that was at her shelter you know maybe it's based on a whole bunch of girls and they just composited it all under one I know they mentioned that some of the girls that play on this is actually real teen moms and they actually stayed at the shelter you know, give me shelter and covers the. Let me say it again. Give me shelter and covers the struggle to for survival, and the hope of redemption through the harsh realities of life on the streets. As a pregnant teenager, Apple Bailey plummets into a perilous struggle until she finds salvation in a suburban shelter for homeless teens. The shelter helps Apple break the shackles of her past and inspire her to embrace the future with clarity, maturity, and hope for herself and her unborn, unborn child. Also starring James Earl Jones, Rosario Dawson, and Brandon Fraser. I actually do like this one. I didn't watch. This one went with Monsterville, Cabinet of Souls. Anybody, can anybody tell me is there any more of these like the Monsterville ones? Cause I actually really like them. This one, anyways. Although, kind of over here, these two are the bad people. I, it said four friends, and I thought the dude beside her is like her other friend, but you, it's a bad guy too. Made in 2015. Dare to enter a mysterious realm where the cost of admission just might be your soul. From the dark imagination of re renowned author Earl Stein and starring Dove Cameron, Catherine Mac McNamara, and Ryan McCartney, and Tiffany A. A. Benson, comes an original chilling adventure when a traveling Hall of Horror show arrives in the town of Danville. Four high school friends can't wait to get spooked. The monsters, zo zombies, and ghouls are completely lifelike, and the villainous showman, Dr. Hysteria, and his enchanting assistant, Lilith, really know how to turn up the scares. But when Beth discovers a haunted cabinet backstage that traps the souls of lost teens, it's up to the gang to stop the mayhem before they are trapped forever. Um, I know, yeah, that cabinet, I actually really like this, um, I know he's in love with her, you know, he's been in love with her for a while, but at first she kind of has feelings for a bad dude there, and then until she finds out who, what, what he's really about, but I know that, um, he, spoiler, he becomes, a, like, a werewolf, 
because the cabinet ends up showing things, it tries to trick you. It shows you things how you want them to be, like, you know, your dreams, what you want things to be like. And then she becomes a witch. And her other friend, boy, it's not shown. Um, let's see if he's on here. Yeah, he's like, can't see him too good, but. That other boy. Can't really do it. Him, right there. Can't really see him too good, but. He becomes a clown. Because he's like a jokester. I'm, I don't know why she becomes a witch. I know, actually, because he never gets up the guts to tell her how he feels. She. She has feelings for him. So she's keeping that all bottled up. I mean, it's actually a really good movie. Then, um, I watched The Haunting. This was made in 1999. Oh, it's the uh, signature selection. I think it's Jane D. Bunt signature on it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it too good, but it's right there, signature. Um, I think it's got special features. Did that come with any special features? I don't remember. Nope. No, it didn't because all I had was the menu on this is awful. They could have done better. The menu. All it has was a little play button, then a, see, I'm guessing a scene button, and that was it. It's like, couldn't they just say play movie or something? I mean, whoever made the menu to it, awful. But, back to this. Um, this has special features. Behind the scenes, two theater trailers, cast and filmmakers' bios, and production notes. And this edge of your seat. Supernatural thriller featuring Hollywood's hottest stars. A I might have to just break this into two because I'm where I'm talking so much. A study in fear escalates into a heart stopping nightmare for a professor and three subjects trapped in a mysterious mansion for over a century. The dark and forbidding Hill House has set alone and abandoned for, or so it seemed. Intrigued by the mansion's storied past, Dr. Marrow lures his three subjects, Theo, Nell, and Luke, to the site for a seemingly harmless experiment. But from the moment of their arrival, Nell seems mysteriously drawn to the house, and the attraction is frighteningly mutual. When night descends, the study goes horrifyingly aware as the subjects discover the haunting secrets that live within the walls of Hill House. Don't miss the state-of-the-art special effects as Hill House unleashes its supernatural wrath in this latest thriller from the director of Speed and Twister. This is the white screen edition. God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> did it to a book, now I'm doing it to this. I then watched All of Me, the comedy that proves that one's a crowd. This was, hopefully I can tell you when this was made. I doubt I will be able to. Anyway, I cannot tell you. Roger Cobb is a swinging bachelor who is a lawyer but would rather be a jazz musician. Edwina Cutwaters is an ailing spinster, spinster who is given a second chance at life, given her soul can be transported into that of another woman, specifically the beautiful daughter of the stable hand. Unfortunately, the guru in charge, Goose, and Edwina's soul winds up taking over the entire right side of Roger, who now must learn to cope with being half the man he was. Now, Edwina and Roger are living together in the same body. He's losing his job, he's losing his girlfriend, and, he's, and he just can't, can't seem to get her out of the system, no matter how hard he tries. Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin make the perfect couple of comedy in this hilariously concocted plot. It's got a trailer and cast and crew information. That's it. I might have enough time to tell you this. I watched all of these. Subspecies The Complete Chronicles. Subspecies 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the Vampire Journals. Which is basically like 
It might as well just been subspecies 5, Ash's story or something. Like, it was basically just Ash. And Jeremiah. But it's basically... It should have either been subspecies... Just might as well have been titled subspecies 5, Ash's story or something. And then, or decadent evil three because I'm sorry but they mentioned this on decadent evil vampires journals could have either been called either one subspecies three young students studying the folklore of Transylvania uncover an ancient clan of vampires ruled by the sadistic monst monstrous Radu who becomes obsessed with making them his fledglings subspecies two Bloodstone. Radu's fledgling Michelle flees from his castle with the holy relic of Bloodstone and struggles with the emerging bloodlust while hiding in the basement of a theater in Bucharest, waiting for her sister to arrive from the U.S. to help her. I gotta admit, from two to four, um, Dana, Dana, Not Dana, Denise Duff. The woman that plays on this. I didn't I already watched this a long time ago, but Denise Duff. She from two to four, Denise Duff played in that. <sighs> I'll explain things later on when I get through these. Subspecies three, Bloodlust. Radu kidnaps Michelle back to the castle he shares with his sorceress mother and teaches her to master her vampire powers, sacrificing everything in his obsession for her while Michelle's sister mounts an armed assault on a stronghold. Subspecies 4, Bloodstorm. The vampire Redoux returns to Bucharest in pursuit of his headstrong fledgling Michelle. He reclaims his underground stronghold from Ash, a powerful vampire who mingles with the world of mortals, while he devises a way into the secret clinic where Michelle is being held by the evil Dr. Nicolescu. I can't remember pronounce it, the last name. Vampire Journals, a 19th century vampire, uh, Jeremiah, if I'm not mistaken, on a quest to destroy the vampires of his bloodline, clump, comes to the mo comes to modern day Bucharest to battle the vampire master Ash, a music lover, using as a as his pawn the innocent soul of a beautiful concert pianist. Sophie, like that was her name. The only thing. I have against. I hope they make another subspecies movie. And I hope some way I know he burns his bones. I'm not gonna go into much spoiler, I'm just gonna go into say spoiler. The dude that's on part one that falls in love with Michelle gets killed on part two. Right at the very beginning. I didn't like that. Why? Can, how, you know how they bring back Dracula on, I think, in one of the books that I've read? I think it's Dracula. Or I'm sure one of them. That they end up spilling blood on his ashes. Boom, he comes back to life. And I've seen it in other horror movies, too, where they just spill blood on the ashes of the vampire. Boom, he comes back to life. Can't they just do it to that? Like... I'm sorry, I kind of like to get him back to life some way, somehow. And then I think it's on part four. Her sister gets killed along with the cop dude, I think, and some woman they rescued. All three of them get killed. I mean, they said they were going to get them back, but then they had to do something else and they couldn't get them back, so they ended up having to make a new story. I really, I don't mean, I love, I love them. Don't get me wrong, I do, I love them. But I just, certain characters I wish they didn't kill off. And then the Vampire's Journal's Ash. I'm kind of glad they made that, because it goes more into the thing that was on Decadent and Evil, them little snippets at the beginning goes more into that, which is a good thing. A spoiler on this, too. Um, let me think. Uh, 
Jeremiah ends up saving her, which is a good thing. And but the thing he said at the end is that he can't be her master. It's too late for him to be her master because he kills Ash. So in a way, he killed his master too. So they're masterless. They're kind of lost. He can help her and help her figure out her powers, but that's all he can do. And he can be a companion, but that's it. Unless they fall in love, I don't know. That'd be kind of interesting. I wish they'd make a vampire journal too, just to follow them. But I actually really did like this movie. Um, I watched for keeps, from backpacks to stroller. When high school students, Molly Ringwald, The Breakfast Club, uh, but, but, uh, what did I say that? Molly Ringwald and Randall Bankoff, Bank, Bank, Bat, Batstenkoff, fall for each other, they wind up taking a crash course in adulthood. In his contemporary romantic comedy, Darcy is a fledg fled fledling, fled fledgling, fledgling journalism student who can't wait to see her name in print. Stan is hoping for a scholarship to Caltech. On top of the world and in love, the future seems idyllic. Until one little thing throws them off track, a baby. This unexpected change of events doesn't sit too well with their moms and dads who just aren't ready to be grandparents. So Darcy and Stan split from their families, get married, and begin a life on their own with their new bundle of joy. It doesn't take long before the honeymoon is over, diapers are in, and late dates are out. But in the end, Sharon Keith's kisses be doing dishes as Darcy and Stan and their families discover that the best love of all is for keeps. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the things that I... Yeah, they lied about being a certain age, and, like, they lied to being 18, but I think she's, like, 16. He must be 17 or something. He might be 16 himself, I'm not really sure. He's, like, 16 or 17. So, um, they lied about being 18 just so they can get married, and eventually she finds out he lied to her because he got a letter to Caltech, and he, like, they can't, they don't accept marriage freshman, like freshman marriage house, and they don't do it. So, at the very end, spoiler, that, that um, she ends up kind of dumping him. She loves him, but she doesn't want him to, what, like, waste his life, doesn't want to not let him do something he loves. He ends up getting um, into the same college as her, going, like, um, journalism for her, and, car uh, what's that? What is he? I don't remember what he does now. Um, something Caltech, whatever Caltech is in, I can't remember now. I think building houses or something carpentry. Carpentry, I don't remember. I'm kind of at a loss. I can't remember. And um, he yeah, I have to do two videos. Maybe he ends up just getting that, and then they end up he ends up proposing again in a way. She ends up getting an annulled. Eventually, they'll just get remarried. Because at first, the family does not want them to be together, and eventually, they learn to accept it. That has no special features. Yeah, I'm going to skip this one for right now. Mm. I then watched Unleashed. I might be able to do one more. Martial arts superstar Jet Li delivers a breakout performance in this gripping, action packed story about a man raised from childhood by a ruthless crime boss who becomes a violent killing machine. When a blind piano tuner takes him in, Danny tries to start a new life, but his brutal past follows him, forcing him to fight back. Featuring breathtaking fight choreography by... I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm not going to end up insulting him, but... That name. Juan? I'm bad at saying their names. Um, the collar comes off, go behind the scenes, interview with director, <sighs> massive attack by the R RZA musical videos. Mm, maybe I could talk a little bit about this. Um, basically it's just about this guy who, what it mentioned in the back, he was a, raised to be a killing machine. He ends up going to live with this Morgan Freeman's character. I think, right? Yeah, Morgan Freeman and his 
his adopted stepdaughter, I guess you could say. And she's white. And I, I think him and that girl end up kind of falling in love. She's in the piano school. And they end up finding who killed his mother. And he ends up going to live with them. All that. He ends up staying with them. I'm not going to go into much detail about it. I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, I'm going to have to do this in two videos. The uh, second video is going to be very short, though. Because I had... Uh, let me see how many. One, two, three, four... Seven videos. Eight. Seven, eight videos in the next one. Yeah, the other one's going to be kind of short, so... See you in the next one. Bye.